everybody, my name is Justine Osowska from Women Blockchain Canada, coming to you from East Denver, and I'm here with James, the co-founder of Inti. Hi James, how are you doing today? Doing great Justine, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm super excited about what you're working on, so thank let you. the audience know about it. Fantastic, so we're Intu, I-N-T-U, and we provide infrastructure that allows developers to create accounts. Uh, they're externally owned accounts, but with no single private key. Right, so it's distributed ownership, distributed risk. Now you can, as a normal end user, you can lose part of your private key and not lose access to your account forever, right? It's closer approaching the human expectation that we have, right? Like being able to reset your password. But now for Web3 assets, Web3 accounts, NFTs, all the cool stuff that we're building in, uh, in Web3. Yeah, I'm super excited, but I know people are always worried about security. So can you go into that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, so the protocol itself handles three main things. Mm -hmm. The first is what we call decentralized key generation. Uh, so we use secure multi-party computation and verified secret sharing to distribute the actual math that creates the accounts between several different devices. The result is that you have your public address at the end of it, but your secret, what you're really trying to protect, never exists on any single machine at any given point in time. So it's really hard to lose or have stolen a private key that never existed in a single place to take it anyways. Um, so once we have the account generated, we use threshold signatures, so you can set a certain percentage of approvals, if you would, to go ahead and create signatures for messages and transactions. Um, we support both ECDSA, so Bitcoin, Ethereum, most of the networks, as well as BLS, which is kind of for the, the future next generation networks, all the ZK Sync stuff. Um, and then we do something called key resharing which means that the shares that are issued to the individual owners or participants in an account, that's how we do the recovery, right? So you can lose one fifth of it and then use the other ones to introduce a new one. If, uh, if you wanted to add another co-signer to your account, you can now do that. If you had a kind of questionable shady blind sign on the network and you're worried about your key being compromised, you can actually use what we call proactive security to revoke every existing secret that was issued before and give everyone new ones. So you can actually protect yourself moving forward as well. Um, Excellent. And now just to like break it down away from the technology for sure. everybody else, what does that mean for the regular user? So when my mom asks me what it is that I'm building, mm -hmm. right? The, my response to her is, I'm going to give you an account, you can now hold crypto, you can now hold NFTs, you can participate in Web3, and if you lose your password, call me and I can help you reset your password. It means that you can lose part of your private key, you can be human, right? Like, I feel like up to this point, if you lost your private key, they say, oh, it's not Web3's fault, it's human error, this is your problem, it was your responsibility, you did this. I don't think that's an acceptable answer anymore, right? Like. If we built a tool that people are hurting themselves with all the time, we should probably fix the tool and you know put training wheels on it. And so for the average end user, this is that, right? This is something closer to what we expect from resetting your password, from having ownership, but also being able to recover it. Yes, you were saying something earlier to me that I found very interesting, which is like, let's say you can even send yourself the information to go other places so you can have your wallet yes. on multiple accounts uh, so maybe you can explain that and also I think you mentioned that yeah you can distribute it so you can do both absolutely so you can do it as you can have an account as an individual you can have an account as a group if I'm an individual I want to finally go buy that super expensive NFT rather than put it on a hardware wallet and be scared that I'm gonna lose this single device this single password I can now create an account with Intu and I can distribute the risk of that ownership between a mobile wallet, my desktop wallet, a hardware wallet, a paper wallet that I wrote into the back of my passport and then give a fifth one to someone I trust, your brother, sister, mom, husband, wife, right? Whoever it might be. If I lose my cell phone, it's okay. I can use the other accounts to go ahead and remove that account and when I get a new one, introduce that back into the ownership pool. In this way, it still doesn't remove the critical failure. Like if you lost all five of them, you'd still lose your account. 
but it's no longer just one seed phrase, one private key that you have to lose, right? It's you're distributing that risk. Um, there's also there's no limit to how many accounts you have owning this. So if, if you're really scared of it, you can divide it up over like 20 different devices, 20 different accounts, right? Yeah. And can you go into where you're operating? I know you're on Ethereum, but I think you mentioned that it's beyond that. So. Absolutely. So the the account that we generate, it's it's an externally owned account. This is the same cryptography that we use in MetaMask, we use in Ledger, right? It's the same thing that we use for external addressing on every network. So out of the gate, the same account that you launched on Ethereum mainnet, you can use it on Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, right? Any network that is EVM compatible. Um, in addition to that, a lot of the computation happens off chain. And so you can, we will eventually also support Rust-based networks, uh, move-based networks, and most likely also flow-based networks. Um, so as a developer, right, so on the other side as a developer, if I'm creating accounts for my end users, I have a game and I want my, my gamers to have full control over their account but also be able to reset their password, I can now provide them these accounts. Right? We've taken technology, previously was the realm of enterprise, big business, Right, very expensive to run, and without it introducing any additional dependencies, now give that technology to normal developers, right? Normal users. Um, so we're again democratizing this, like cutting edge stuff. Awesome. It's super exciting to bring it to people. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Okay.